Think about learning piano like a puzzle. And normal piano lessons are like this puzzle. And with this puzzle, there are a thousand pieces. And even if you do manage to put it together, you might not like the final product. Now, when I say normal piano lessons, I'm talking about the ones where it's like an in-person teacher. You go probably once a week. They're teaching you sheet music. When you do finally get to songs, they are old school songs like Mozart and Bach. And it really takes years to see any tangible results. And you see, I took these normal piano lessons when I was a kid. That's how I got started with piano. And I took those piano lessons for 12 years. 12 years of traditional piano lessons. And I looked up after 12 years and I could literally only play two songs on the piano. And I didn't even like those two songs. But fortunately I learned a new way to, to learn and to teach piano. And it is significantly easier and significantly faster than, than this. And for the past 11 years, I've taught tens of thousands of people who thought maybe they'd never learn how to play piano to play with this new way. You see, if this puzzle and these pieces represent normal piano lessons, traditional piano lessons, what if you could get better results, faster results, easier results from a much simpler puzzle? Because what I've found is there really are only four main pieces to the puzzle of learning piano. First, we have the notes. You have to learn the notes. Those are just the individual keys on the piano. And then we have something called chords, which is just a fancy word for playing multiple notes at the same time. And next up, we have chord progressions, which is just playing multiple chords in a sequence one after the other. And last we have songs, which ultimately is the goal of playing the piano. Knowing how to play the piano is playing songs on the piano and songs you actually like to be playing on the piano. It's not drilling scales. It's not this crazy, boring practice. Playing the piano, being able to play the piano is playing songs. And so that obviously is a key puzzle piece to all of this. But you can't get to songs until we learn the notes and then the chords, then the chord progressions, and then we have songs. And then once you get to that point very, very fast, you'll be playing songs on the piano for the rest of your life. So it's when these pieces come together in that order that you have learned piano quickly, pretty easily, and you're playing songs you absolutely love on the piano. And so that's exactly what we'll be doing with the rest of this video is I'll show you how to complete this very simple puzzle right here. Not this one over here. You won't see me completing this one in this video, but this one we will complete together. And by the end of this video, even if you've never touched a piano before, you'll be able to play real songs on the piano. Here's an example of what you could sound like just by the end of this video. Do you recognize this song? This is part of Let It Be by the Beatles and you will be able to play it just like this by the end of this video because we're going to be putting this puzzle together and not that one. So let me go ahead and grab my trusty keyboard that is back here and we will start with the notes. All right, I've got my keyboard set up now. So let's begin by learning the notes on the piano and not the way that you would learn in traditional piano lessons. We're not doing sheet music. It's not gonna take a long time. In just a few minutes, you will truly understand the notes on the piano. So here I am at my keyboard. Maybe you have a piano, maybe you have a keyboard like me. Maybe you have a keyboard that has fewer keys or notes than I have, but that's probably okay. See, what I have here is called a full size keyboard because it's the same amount of keys or notes as a standard 88 key piano, okay? So what you're seeing here is 88 keys. This is full size. If you have less than that, what I'd like for you to do is check and make sure that you have at least 49 keys. If you have at least 49, then you are good. And when you add up your keys, add up the black ones and the white ones to get to your total number of keys. Now I've said the word keys, I've said the word notes for where we are right now, those words can be just completely interchangeable. What we mean by either one of those keys, notes is just the individual, like if you look at a piano, it's kind of like you're just reaching out and pressing an individual button, okay? So when I say a key, a note, that's what I'm referring to is one of these things. I have 88 of them, we've established that, but guess what? You do not need to memorize all 88 to truly learn the notes on the piano. And the reason is, is because there are these sections of 12 keys that just repeat themselves over and over again across the entire piano. So you see these patterns of two black notes and then three black notes, that's what's repeating itself 
that you can see here. And the big takeaway for you there should be that you really only need to know the 12 notes of the piano because those 12 just repeat themselves over and over again. So once you learn the 12 and once you truly learn the 12 notes, you've learned all 88. The other thing that can be overwhelming for beginners is just the way this whole thing looks and these patterns of black notes and white notes. It's very intimidating if you don't know how to play. So the next thing, the next myth I want to dispel for you is that it's really not that complicated because there's actually no difference between the black and the white notes. They do exactly the same thing. They're all in order. And the only reason that we have black notes and white notes is so that you can tell where your hands are on the keyboard at any given time, okay? So we literally could have 88 identically looking purple keys. Imagine 88 long skinny rectangle keys all across here. We could play it the same, it would sound the same because black and white notes are the same, they do the same thing. We just wouldn't be able to tell where we are on the keyboard, right, if they all look the same. But because we have these black notes strategically placed within the white notes the way they are, that makes it really easy for us to tell where our hands are. So I'll get to this in a minute, but you see these two black notes, right? They repeat themselves. Any white note just to the left of the two black notes, I always know that's a C note, right? This is a C, this is a C, this is a C, and so on. So that's really the only reason that the black notes look the way that they do, but they really are the same, okay? And everything's in order. I'm just playing notes completely in order. Everything up here is much higher pitch on the keyboard or piano, and everything down here is a much lower pitch, all right? So the higher notes we wanna play up here, the lower deep, deep notes we wanna play down here. It's all in order, it's all right there, out there, right in front of you too, like little buttons ready for you to just push. And it's for those reasons that I truly believe that piano is the easiest instrument for you to learn. Other instruments, the notes simply aren't in order. Like a, a trombone, you've got to push the slide out to a certain position for one note and then out here for the next note and then move it back in for the next note, they're not in order. You think about guitar, the strings are simply not in order sequentially note after note. And that really applies for any stringed instrument. So one thing that typically prevents beginners from even getting started on the piano because it just looks so intimidating. But hopefully already by this point in the video, I've convinced you that's really not that complicated. It's all in order. They're like these little buttons you just reach out and press and you only really have to know 12 notes and then you know all 88. Just convincing you that you can do this is half the battle. So hopefully I've done that. Now let's learn the rest of the names of the notes. So we started at C, that's typically your most common note on the piano. Like I said, you can just find any two of the black notes anywhere on the piano and that white note just to the left of those two black notes is always going to be a C. So we're gonna carve out this section right here of 12 notes and these are the ones we're going to learn this section right kind of in the middle of my piano starting with C. Now we'll focus on the white notes first and then we'll come back to the black notes but all we do with the white notes is we progress down the alphabet. So after C we have D, E, F, G, now, this does not just apply to piano. This is music in general. There's no letters after G, all right? There's no H and beyond in music. After G, we just go back to the beginning of the alphabet and go to A. So then we have A and B, and then of course the next one would be C again. So again, it's C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Now, typically I'm not a huge fan of memorization because I would like for you to understand the whys behind what you're doing so that you can then apply it to so many other things. But you do truly need to memorize these seven notes plus the five black notes we'll get to in a second. But just because you can find the note by starting back at C does not mean you've truly known the note, okay? So this first piece of the puzzle, when I say notes, it's to truly know the notes and make them second nature for you. So for example, if I ask you, hey, play me a G note, and you have to start back at C to find G. Okay, G, let's see, C, D, E, F, G, G. All right, that's not actually knowing G. When I say, hey, play G, you should be able to go straight to G and you should know G for what it is. 
it's okay, the three black notes, it's between the first two of the three black notes right here, right? When I say play E, you should be able to go straight to E. I like to think of it kind of like the days of the week. If I tell you to tell me about Wednesday, you don't have to start back at Sunday or Monday and count to get to Wednesday to tell me everything you know about Wednesday. And that's because it's so second nature for you, the days of the week. You've been through it so many times in your life and you know a Wednesday, it's the middle weekday, it comes right after Tuesday, it comes after Thursday. All right, that would just be silly if you had to start back and count back from the beginning of the week every time you needed to tell somebody about a certain day of the week. That's the point I want you to be with the notes because it's gonna help you so much better with these other puzzle pieces we'll get to here in just a little bit. So once again, you should be able to go straight to the note when I ask you to play the note. Right? If I ask you to play an A, you should go straight to it and not have to count all the way back from C. But those are the seven white notes. Let's talk about the five black notes. Remember, they do exactly the same thing. Another reason people feel like they're more complicated is because they're named kind of funky, right? They don't, they don't really have their own names. They're named based on the relationship to the white key next to it, all right? So for example, this right here is called C sharp, C sharp but every black note is actually next to two white notes. So therefore, every black note has two names, all right, because it's named after each of the white notes that it's next to. So not only is this C sharp, but it's also called D flat, all right? C sharp and D flat. This one here is D sharp and also E flat. All right, so what I've found is the best way to tell the difference between sharp and flat is think about it this way, all right? Sharp, we're going to the right to the black note, all right? And the word sharp and the word right both have five letters in those words. Sharp and right both have five letters. Now flat is when we're going to the left and flat and left both have four letters, all right? So when we're going flat, think left and when it's sharp, think right. All right, so given that right here, we have F sharp, right? We had to go right to get to the black note, so you gotta think right sharp, so it's F sharp, and then it's also G flat. This one is G sharp and also A flat, and then right here we have A sharp and also B flat, all right? So those are the 12 names of the 12 notes, and remember that exact same pattern repeats itself across the entire keyboard, and once you truly learn these 12 notes, you've learned the notes of the entire keyboard. So if I ask you to play B flat, you should be able to go straight to B flat with a little bit of practice, of course, and that one would work. This is also B flat. This is also B flat. We'll talk later about when you might want to play one versus the other, but just know those are all B flats. So practice these notes until they become second nature for you, like the days of the week are now second nature for you. I recommend printing off flashcards or getting somebody to call them out for you. If you'd like some flashcards, I am going to link to my free workbook below this video, which will allow you to download some flashcards and print those out and practice the notes. Now, one last thing before we move on to the next puzzle piece is a lot of beginners at this point, when they're learning the notes, they're gonna go to Amazon and they're gonna buy one of these fancy sticker packs that they can take, like here's an E right here, you can take that sticker and place it right on the E key so that all your keys are labeled. And I want to caution you against doing that because it's going to be one big giant crutch for you, okay? And so if you put these stickers on your keys as a beginner and you learn to play that piano that way where all of your keys are labeled, it will work for you. But then when you go out into the world and you see other pianos that you could possibly play, you go to a friend's house, they have a piano, you're going out to a restaurant or bar or something, there's a piano available to play, you're not going to be able to play it because they don't have that crutch of the stickers on the key. So I want you to truly be able to play the piano without this crutch so that you can go and play any piano out there in the world. So I would caution you against using these stickers, against getting these stickers at the beginning and truly learn the piano without them because it's gonna serve you really, really well later down the road. All right, so you learn the notes. That is one of our four pieces. Next up, we're going to do chords, all right? Like I told you, chords are simply multiple notes played at the same time. So we really wanted to understand notes really, really well because it is our foundation for the rest of everything. 
Now when you play multiple notes at the same time, that's called a chord. So let's get into that. And look, chords are just really, really powerful. They are a building block into many of the songs that we know and love. To demonstrate how common chords are, I'm gonna play a few popular songs for you and call out to you when you're hearing some of those piano chords in the song. All right, we'll start with All of Me by John Legend. I'll kind of call out for you the chords here. You ready? Chord, 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 chord. What would I do without your smile? Every piano stroke you hear in that song is a chord. It's multiple notes played at the same time. Chord, 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 chord. All right, let's do another one. Let's do Hello by Adele. All right, and let's listen for the chords. Here we go. Chord, 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 chord. Hello, it's me. Chord, chord. Chord, chord. Chord, chord. Think of the possibility on the piano if I just taught you how to play chords on the piano, which I'm about to do. So let's do one more here. Let's do Let It Be by the Beatles. Here we go with Let It Be. Chord, 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 chord chord, chord, chord. Those are three very, very popular songs with piano in them, with piano chords in them. I wanted to demonstrate for you how common chords are. So your homework is actually to start listening. When you're listening to songs on the radio and whatnot, listen out for those chords, for those multiple notes played at the same time. Now, chords. The majority of chords fall into one of two categories. We have major chords and we have minor chords. Don't get overwhelmed, I'm going to explain it to you. The major chords are the ones that sound nice and happy and cheery. That's actually the most common type of chord is a major chord. So for example, this is a major chord. Here's a major chord. The minor chords, they sound a little more sad, a little more dreary, okay? Here's a couple of examples of minor chords. All right, so once again, major chord, minor chord. Hopefully you can hear the difference between that happier chord and that sadder chord. All right, next, I'm going to teach you every single major and minor chord on the entire piano, and you're going to learn it like that, okay? In traditional piano lessons, in these piano lessons, you've got to memorize each and every single chord. But with my nice, simple piano lessons, I'm going to give you very simple formulas to where you instantly know all of the chords, all right? So the formula, the very basic formula for major chords is simply four, three. If you can remember four, three, you know how to play any major chord on the piano. Here's how we apply it. Let's say we want to play a C major chord, all right? So you always start on the note that's in the name of the chord. So we'll start on a C, and then we always go to the right with our formula. So our formula is four, then three. So all we do is we go to the right four, and then we go to the right three. Here we go. We're at C, we're gonna go to the right, four notes. Remember black, white, they're all the same, they do the same thing, so we count them in our formula. One, two, three, four. We just went to the right on our keyboard, four notes. So now we've got a finger on C, and we've got a finger on E, because we went right four, and then we need to go right three, because that's the rest of our formula. So let's go right three, one, two, three. There's our C major chord. C, E, G, but you don't need to memorize C, E, G. You just need to know four, three, because once you know four, three, you know every major chord on the entire piano. So let's take another example. Let's say if I asked you to play a G major chord. We'll start on G, we'll go to the right, the very next four keys, one, two, three, four and then three, one, two, three. There's a G major chord. Let's try D major. There's our D, one, two, three, four. Uh, this time we're gonna have to play a black note. One, two, three. There's our D major chord. Now let's try a kind of a tricky one. We'll start with the black note. Let's go B flat. 
major chord. All right, we find our B, so left flat. We have our B flat, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. There's our B flat major chord. As far as what fingers you use, you can definitely use your thumb, your middle finger, and your pinky for these major chords, and minor chords will get there. But I also am a big fan of using whatever feels comfortable for you. So I have a lot of students who like to use their thumb, pointer, and fourth finger on these chords. That totally works. And probably the most advanced way to do it so that you can do more things later on down the road is actually use your thumb, pointer, and middle finger. That's the way that I typically like to do these chords. A lot of people's hands aren't quite big enough for this, so don't feel bad if you can't do that, but I'm giving you three different fingering options. All are perfectly fine. So if you wanna try the thumb, pointer, middle, it could look like that. That's a C major chord. There's a G major chord. There's that B flat major chord. So now you actually know how to play every single major chord on the piano. Let me show you just as easily how to play every single minor chord on the piano. The formula is very similar for minor chords, it's just reversed. For minor chords, we do three and then four. So for example, if you wanted to play a C minor on the piano, start at C, that doesn't change. But then instead of going up four, we go up three. Okay, so one, two, three, and then we go up four. One, two, three, four. So there's our C minor chord. Next up, let's try an E minor. So we'll start at E, we'll go up three, one, two, three, and then four. One, two, three, four. There's our E minor chord. Next, let's try a G flat minor chord. So we'll start at G, we'll go left since it's flat. Now we're at a G flat, and then we'll go minor. So remember three and then four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. There's a G flat minor chord. So if you can remember four, three for major chords and three, four for minor chords, you can now play every single major and minor chord across the entire piano. And major and minor chords make up almost every chord you will come across when trying to play the piano. Now at this point, we pretty much only talked about the right hand, so let's talk about what you're gonna do with that left hand of yours when we're playing chords. When you're playing a chord, and let's say, for example, we're playing a C major chord. You're just gonna play two C's in the left hand with your pinky and your thumb like this. And it'll be the same whether it's a major chord or a minor chord. So whatever that note is within the chord name, that's what we play in our left hand. So if we have an F major chord, we're gonna play our F major chord in the right hand, and we're going to play two Fs in the left hand. If your hand is not big enough to where you can play two of the same note in the left hand at the same time, that's okay. It's gonna sound almost just as good if you play just one note instead of two. So for that F major, we could play like this and play that F right here. Or if you prefer, you could use your pinky and play this F down here. But if you can reach, play two in the left hand. And that's what we start doing with our left hand with these chords, major or minor, doesn't matter, we do the same thing. So your next step is to practice the chords, kind of like we practice the notes, flashcards are great. Once again, I've got a free resource for you in the description below that you can print out some flashcards and it's also going to go over a lot of the material we're covering today in this video. I'll talk more about that workbook at the end, but practice your chords like we practice the notes so that you can begin to get second nature with these major and minor chords as well because that's gonna serve you so well with our last two pieces of chord progressions and songs. All right, at this point, we have thoroughly covered notes as well as chords and really shown you the power of chords by listening to those example pop songs where we heard the chords and then just showed you the really, really easy way to learn all the major and minor chords. You don't have to memorize all the major and minor chords but you just have to remember those two simple formulas. So multiple notes played at the same time are chords. Chords are made with notes. Our next piece, chord progressions, are made with chords. So we put some chords together, then we have chord progression, and that's what we're covering next. So to start, let me show you probably the most popular and common chord progression of all time. It's four chords put together in order. We start with C major. Don't forget the left hand at this point. There's our C major chord. Remember, whichever of the three fingerings in the right hand that you have chosen to use. C major, next we have G major. You'll notice when we went from C major to G major, it was actually quite a big of a jump. Our top note in our C major chord was going to be the bottom note of our next G major chord. So it was a big jump. Our next jump is only one note. We go from G major up to A minor. 
All right, in this case, our minor chord is all white notes. That's one of the reasons that this progression I'm going to show you is so popular is because it's fairly easy. All four chords in this progression are all white notes. I don't want you to be scared by the black notes. Remember, they do the same thing as the white notes and we will incorporate them more and more. But for now, I'm gonna show you a progression with just white notes. So there's our A minor. And then after A minor, we go down two to F major. And then we start it all over again back to C major. So once again, C major, G major, A minor, F major. And I want you to play that sequence over and over again. We wanna really get comfortable with this sequence. Once you start to get a little comfortable with this sequence, we're going to continue doing it but we're going to hit each chord two times instead of once. So I'm about to start it back over and we're gonna do it twice. Now, many of you are not going to be able to play it that fast by hitting it twice that fast just yet, and that's okay. If you can't play that fast, slow it down as much as you need to in order to keep up the rhythm, okay? So if you need to go just ridiculously slow right now while you're getting the hang of it, that's okay. The space in time between when you press that first chord the first time and when you press it the second time, that pause should be the same amount of time as when you press the chord the second time and then you press the next chord the first time, okay? This is one of the biggest struggles I see with beginners on the piano is with this rhythm. And I have a technique to show you so that it doesn't become a problem from, for you. But first I need you to understand what the potential problem is. What I don't want you to sound like is like this. and you're kind of searching for the next chord, you play the, you play the chord twice really, really fast, and then you're searching for the next chord, and then you find it, you play it twice. No, I want it nice, steady rhythm, like this. Slow it down as much as you need to, and then you'll slowly speed it up is how you can get to the point where you're playing like this. So that is a nice, simple chord progression with four chords. We're playing each chord two times before we're moving on to the next chord and we're doing it with nice, even rhythm and we're practicing to get to that point. Now, let me show you your second chord progression. Now, it starts out very similarly to the one we learned already. It starts with C major, and then it goes to G major. And by the way, if I don't say major or minor, that implies major, okay? So if I just say, play me a C chord, that's gonna be a C major chord. So it's C, and then G, and then our last progression went to A minor next, but this one is actually gonna to go to F major next. And then we're gonna go E minor, D major, C. So those, those last four kind of happen quickly. So we go C, G, F, E, E minor, D major, C, all right? And we're gonna play the first couple of chords twice, and then those last few happen fairly quickly, so we're only gonna play them once, kind of like this. So there's two progressions. Let me give you one more simple pattern to add in here that's going to take this to another level. Instead of playing the chords two times each, what we're gonna do is we're going to play it one time with both of our hands, and then we're just gonna play the right side once, and then the left side once, and then we'll move on to the next chord, okay? So the way that works with the first progression, so we'll do the C, G, A minor, F, it sounds like this. And the way 
way that could sound with the second progression is we'll only do that for the first couple of chords because the last chords, I want you to play them just once fairly quickly together. And you'll see why in a little bit why that is. our second progression there. So you've learned some patterns, you've learned some rhythm, you've learned some chord progressions. You know what's next, our last piece, and that is songs. So songs is our last puzzle piece. It, it took going through notes and chords and chord progressions to get here. We can't just start with songs. We have to build our piano knowledge on a, on a stronger foundation than that, rather than just going straight to uh, songs. But when these four pieces come together, that's when you really, really can play piano, play songs you love, and learn so, so quickly, at least a lot faster than the alternatives out there. So I'm gonna show you this last piece, and we're gonna be playing real songs on the piano. And remember, with our four pieces, chords were just made up with the, the previous piece. Of, of notes and then and chord progressions were just made up of chords and songs just consist of chord progressions now some songs do have just the same exact chord progression all the way through but more commonly there are multiple chord progressions within a song all right so we're talking about songs here and we've learned two chord progressions if we play those two chord progressions that we've learned back to back it's actually part of a song that's very very popular so let me play it a couple of times back to back, and maybe some of you have already caught on to what song that is. Does that sound familiar? Very, very basic version of Let It Be by the Beatles. We talked about that song a little bit earlier. It was one of the chord examples I gave you, and we're already starting to piece that together. So you see how we came from notes, and then we put some notes together, made some chords, we put some chords together, made some progressions, and now we put a couple of chord progressions together, and it's starting to sound like a real, actual song. Now, I don't want you to have to keep coming back to me every time you want to learn a new song and say, hey Jacques, what are the chords, what are the chord progressions for XYZ song I want to learn? Let me next show you how you can look that up on your own and so you can take everything you've learned here today and start learning the songs that you want to learn rather than just the examples that I'm showing you. And so what you do is on your computer or your phone or whatever, go to Google, go to your search engine of your choice and type in the name of the song you want to learn followed by the word chords. So I'm going to type in, let it be chords. And what you'll want to do is typically the first result in Google that comes up will be the, will be the best version that we wanna click on. And oftentimes it's going to be from a website called Ultimate Guitar. And that is one of my favorites. So definitely click on that. What we're finding is something called a chord chart, where it's got the lyrics of the song plus the chord associated with that lyric, like right above the lyric of where it happens in the song. And typically this is the way that guitarists will play the, the song, but we're gonna use it for piano because we've now learned how powerful chords can be and that we can play them easily on the piano. So what I'm gonna do is just X out any ads or anything we don't need here. And here's the next trick is we're actually going to hit this simplify button at the bottom because what simplify does is it takes any crazy chords, like you see this one right here, it's got a seven in it, an F6, any chords that are not major and minor, it converts them to major and minor and it sounds pretty much just as good. So we're gonna click simplify and now we just have major and minor chords. So remember when I said, if I don't say major or minor, it's automatically a major chord. The same thing applies with these chord charts. So the very first chord just says C, that means it's C major. So we have C major, then G major, then we have A minor, and then F major. And then we have our C, G, F, E, D, C. All right, so that's our, our two progressions back to back that we already learned. And so that's how you could start playing Let It Be by the Beatles on your own if I hadn't told you what chords were in here. Now, when you look up the chord charts like this, one big tip that I have when you're starting to learn a new song, and I've played this way for, for decades now, and I still do this, is I'll start learning a new song by playing along with the artist version of the song. So next, we're gonna do All of Me by John Legend. And if I'm starting to learn that song, I'll, I'll look up John Legend's version on YouTube or Spotify, and I'll play along first 
before I break free and, and play it on my own. So let's say you want to play All of Me by John Legend. We'll go back to Google and we'll do the same thing. We'll type in the name of the song followed by the word chord. So in this case, it's All of Me Chords. And we'll click on that first result and then make sure we're hitting simplify and Xing out of any distractions here. And now we have the chords to our song. So it starts in an E minor, and then it goes to C major, right? And then G major, and then D major. And you'll notice we start with an intro here that is before any of the, uh, the lyrics, the singing actually starts. So we play that progression two times, and then the actual singing starts. So that progression is E minor, right? So if you're like, oh yeah, what, what is an E minor? You don't have to remember the actual notes, just remember minor, so it's three and then four. So we have E, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. There's our E minor, two E's in the left hand. If you can reach, there's our E minor. So we go E minor, we go C major, we go G major, and D. So that's just the first progression in this song. You'll see as we progress through this song chart, there are additional progressions that you will need to play. But once you know the notes and the chords, and the simple formula for chords, it's easy to start learning new songs on the piano with this method. So what we've gone over here today is the fastest and easiest way to go from never having touched a piano before to really understanding how the piano works and starting to play a basic version of popular songs on the piano. And with just what we've covered here today, you're playing a basic version of so many songs, but there certainly are a few more things here and there, some advanced techniques that can elevate your playing and elevate these songs even more to make them sound like full and complete songs. So to give you some examples of things that would be good to add in, once you feel comfortable with what we've gone over today, would be how to play the pedal, how to play inversions, which is switching the order that the notes happen in the chord, how to play arpeggios, how to do different chord patterns and left and right hand patterns, how to play on multiple octaves on the piano. So there are these more advanced techniques that we're not gonna cover in this video in particular because I want you to get good at the things that we went over so far. But just to show you where we are going, this same song, All of Me by John Legend, and adding in a few of those more advanced techniques can sound a little something like this. Thank you so much out there for joining me here for this piano lesson today. I hope that you can see that for you, learning piano, playing songs that you want to learn on the piano is possible. And hopefully you can see that in a shorter and easier amount of time than you thought was possible, you can do this. Stop messing around with this crazy, complicated puzzle that you might not even like the end result for when it can be much much simpler for you. When these pieces come together, you can actually be playing piano and impressing your family and friends on the piano. So I've got a free resource that I've told you about a couple of times so far that is waiting for you. And if you've made it to the end of this video, it's absolutely perfect for you to continue learning with. It's going to go over everything that we've learned today, plus start introducing you to a few of these more advanced techniques. It's my free workbook called Learn 36 Popular Songs in Just Five Days. You can find the link to that on the screen or in the description below. So please go check out that completely free resource so we can continue learning piano together to get you where you want to be in record time. So go ahead and grab that now. I look forward to continuing to be your piano teacher.